everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. This isn't going to be the fun, upbeat video that I usually try to film and put onto my channel. I just went to the doctor on Wednesday, it is now Friday, and we had our first ultrasound and it turns out that um, it's not going to be a successful pregnancy. Um, the fetus looked like it was six weeks. I, I should have been at eight weeks, four days, and the fetus was the size of six weeks, and there was no detectable heartbeat, and that is pretty much, I mean, the doctor didn't want to say 100% sure, um, but I told her that, uh, because, because she's, okay, so the doctor didn't want to say 100% sure because she said perhaps we were incorrect about the timing of conception and then I told her that I didn't think that that was possible because I have been tracking my period very carefully on an app called Clue if you're interested in a period tracker. I do use Clue and I do like it. I actually heard of it from Gabby Hanna who is a huge YouTuber. Uh, anyway, so I told her that I have been tracking my period on that app and that there couldn't have been an error with the conception timing. So, um, it, so then she became more certain that it looked like a miscarriage. I want to do a miscarriage story video because I know when I'm going through something, something that I do is I fall into the YouTube spiral wanting to hear testimonials from other people, mostly women, with their stories about what it was like and what they went through for that thing, whatever it is. So I'm going to tell a little bit more detail about the story. And if you are stumbling on this video because you're in that position, and if you are in a very scared place, say you're a young girl or you're in a situation where you don't know who to turn to, please do your best to make a doctor's appointment. Um, and if you cannot make a doctor's appointment for whatever reason, Find a Planned Parenthood if you can. I know Planned Parenthood is very controversial and I don't want to bring controversy to my channel at all ever, but when I was in college, I used Planned Parenthood for contraception and support and they are extremely supportive, the people there, and whatever you are going through, they will make you feel validated, like you are not alone, and they will help you find solutions to whatever you are going through. So uh, find yourself a Planned Parenthood, even if you need to take a bus five hours to get there. It will be so worth it and such a relief for you. I am not a doctor, but what I'm going to say is uh, specifically my experience and I do know that when I found out I was pregnant, I started reading and, you know, looking at YouTube testimonials like I say that I do, uh, and one of the first things I learned, because I, I do know that miscarriage is common, not a lot of people know that miscarriage is as common as it is, but one of the first things I looked up was what are, what's the likelihood that this can miscarry, because I wanted to be very realistic about my hopes and my expectations. And I found that it's a 20% chance one in five pregnancies are not successful. They result in miscarriage. And so I did go into this with that awareness. I was very, very excited, but I kept a huge piece of my brain aware of that fact. So that's why I don't seem as sad as you might expect. I am quite sad, I am quite bummed, I'm quite disappointed. On the flip side, I am also able to remain very, very grateful that we were able to get pregnant. Not only able to get pregnant, we got pregnant on our first try. So that's a big win in my book. Uh, so we can get pregnant quite easily. That is huge to me and I look forward to what I now have learned is called my rainbow baby. I've learned that term actually from a couple of the subscri subscribers that I began to talk to and I told my husband that last night and he thought that that was a really special term and we really look forward to having our rainbow baby. We're going to try right away uh, to have that and um, yeah, so a little bit about what happened. I was experiencing symptoms still up until 
So the appointment was on Wednesday and I was experiencing symptoms until Monday. I could still say that I felt pregnant. The Sunday night, I was just crying for no reason. So the hormones were still going pretty crazy in my body. Some women, a miscarriage symptom is that you're a symptom of miscarriage is that the pregnancy symptoms themselves start to decrease, fade, and essentially go away. Uh, so I was experiencing pregnancy symptoms until a couple days before the miscarriage started. And so that was Sunday night and on Monday I was feeling very lightheaded and headachey, and I had a headache on Monday. And then I noticed on Tuesday, I was thinking, you know, I feel pretty good today. That's kind of interesting. And then Tuesday, when I started to, when I was going to the bathroom, I started to see a very, very faint pink tinge to when I wiped. And then Tuesday night, I started to have very, very mild cramping, like period cramps. And then, sun, um, sorry, Wednesday morning, uh, which was just two days ago and the day of my ultrasound appointment, I had more severe cramps and it was like, when I wiped, it was pink. It was a, a tinge of pink, like, like this, maybe even darker, darker, like, like all the lipstick on the other side. <laughs> that is actually kind of what it looked like, like this. Um, and... That's funny. Anyway, so it was very, very much there that I was experiencing cramping and bleeding. And this was the morning before our first ultrasound appointment. And so we got there and I told the doctor right away and she just said, well, it, let's just see before we talk about what if. So we'll just see. The ultrasound machine was right there. So we, she just said, let's just see. And she did the ultrasound, and like I said, it was um, the fetus was the size that it should be at six weeks, and there was no detectable heartbeat. And we had the miscarriage talk, and I asked her some questions about how painful it's going to be, and she couldn't really answer me definitively. And I found that it's just quite different in all of the YouTube testimonials that I have watched. It's quite different for each woman who goes through this. I am currently miscarrying. I, I am I am currently wearing a pad. I'm currently experiencing cramping. It is happening right now. And I, it could go on for me for a week. It could go on for me for a few weeks. It could get really intensely painful at times, which actually it has, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. And it could be fairly mild the whole time. It just really, really depends. What is quite common and seems to be uh, true for everyone though is that there's a lot that comes out. And <laughs> I am, I uh, so far haven't had too, too much. I had what was essentially period stuff coming out not last night, but the night before. And so this was um, Wednesday, again, back to the day of the appointment of the ultrasound. So we left the appointment. Oh yeah, I <laughs> that's where I was. We had the conversation about what to expect and I've learned that it's different for everyone. And so uh, she couldn't really answer me definitively. And so I left the appointment and we went to the store, we got some pads. They recommend that if you're going through this that you wear pads and not tampons so that you can let things flow and it's not going to be the same coming out of you as it is during a period. So that's a tip if you weren't aware. Uh, use pads and not tampons. Um, there's gonna be quite a bit of tissue coming out. And so I, we left, we got pads, and then I wasn't sure if I should go to work. I'm unfortunately in a position where I can work from home and I can pretty much make the decision myself. Uh, I'm quite lucky as far as that's concerned. And I don't like to, I feel very guilty. I have staff I wanna set a good example for, but I, the night after we left the appointment at about 1 a.m., I was I was kept awake from about 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. with really, really intense uh, cramps and bleeding, and that was no fun. And I actually, I sat in the living room with a heating pad on, which helped, 
uh, hunched over and I was half working. I started working and I was sending emails in the middle of the night and I sent an email to my boss and to my staff saying, I am going through something right now that's very personal. It's a medical issue. I will be fine. Uh, but I am experiencing some very intense pain and I need to stay home. And they just said, please take care of yourself. They completely understood. And anyway, so I was doubled over and I was half working and half watching YouTube videos <laughs> just to entertain myself because otherwise I would have just been sitting there for three hours in pain doing nothing. And then finally I felt like I could go back to sleep. Um, and I switched from Tylenol to ibuprofen at that point. I had been taking Tylenol just did the 1% chance that we were wrong and this actually wasn't a miscarriage, but that night kind of proved to me that that's, that's what we're dealing with is a miscarriage. So I switched from Tylenol to ibuprofen and ibuprofen is much more effective for me with period cramps. Tylenol was pretty much doing zero. I think that's why I was in so much pain that night. And so I took ibuprofen, I, got, I went back to sleep for a few more, more hours. I took ibuprofen all day yesterday. I am hopped up on ibuprofen and um, right, oh, and then, uh, so I went back to sleep for um, 4 to about 6.30 a.m. And when I woke up, I then took the ibuprofen and I almost fainted. I was so lucky that I was standing next to my bed and I could just fall into my bed and breathe through it. And I didn't actually go vasovagal, which is what it's called. You're... Um, Anyway, I didn't actually faint. <laughs> I got a little bit technical there, but I didn't actually faint. I was able to fall into bed and breathe through it. And um, yeah, so I have felt very fainty. I felt very fainty throughout the pregnancy. Um, so that was another thing, and that's another reason why I'm kind of just trying to take it easy uh, because I don't want to suddenly feel that again when I'm in a situation, say, in a big meeting and I, oh gosh, that would be so embarrassing to be in a big meeting and just say, excuse me, stand up to leave the room and just hit the floor. That would be so embarrassing. Anyway, um, so I am, uh, as I stayed home yesterday, the bleeding subsided a little bit and uh, it's still going on. It's going on and uh, I'm staying home today as well. It is Friday midday and um, I will keep you guys posted. I haven't passed what seems to be the sac or any clots or any tissue yet so I don't think that I have seen the worst of it. I, um, again, I, my husband, my poor husband is, he's pretty sad. I don't think that he really appreciated the likelihood that it could be a miscarriage or, or had any awareness of how common they are. And, um, and that doesn't make them any easier. That does not make them any easier, but, um, they're quite common. So he, but he was very surprised. He felt like someone punched him in the chest. He has been so excited. I'm so lucky to have him. I'm so grateful. He's just, he's just amazing. Um, yeah, but I think that he's finally come to terms with it. And yeah, like I said, um, so we are going to try again uh, as soon as we can. I have an ovulation test kit. My doctor, some doctors say to wait for your next cycle. So we have a miscarriage wait for a period, and then start to try to get pregnant so that you can um, track the date of conception and predict dates more easily. But my doctor said that she doesn't really see that as necessary because you can tell from fetus size and it's not crucial. She said, go ahead and try as soon as you think you're ovulating. So I have, I have ovulation test strips. I am going to start using them once this seems to all be cleared out. Um, if you do have a miscarriage, also, uh, they, she said you can't have intercourse for two weeks after. Um, I don't know if that's after. I need to clarify that. I don't know if that's after the first date you start bleeding from the miscarriage or two weeks after you stop and you don't see anything else. If you know, please leave a comment below. If you know anything, please leave a comment below. I am all about asking for help and advice and I want to hear your two cents so 
please let me know what it was like for you, what you know about this. If you're a mother, physician, if your best friend went through it, whatever you got, um, that would be really lovely. lovely. Uh, so we're going to try right away and I will keep you guys updated. So it looks like my giant channel is kind of branching into including um, my family planning journey as well. And I want to thank all of you who <laughs> have talked to me through things and, and asked me how things are going and etc, etc, etc. I love you all and uh, be on the lookout for more videos as always. Okay, have a wonderful day. Mwah.